Hello, this is exercise 7b. We're looking today at um, inverse trigonometric functions and also looking at their graphs. Now, we've seen these functions before. For instance, here at the top it says inverse sine of x. And it's those um, functions I want to look at today. Now, inverse functions, first consider the graph of y equals sine x. So this is what you should remember the sine x graph to look like. There it is. Now, I want to find the inverse of this graph, the inverse function of this graph. And I want to know what the graph of that will look like. But the problem is, this is a many-to-one function. By that I mean there's that goes to there, and that goes to there, then that goes... So there's lots of different values that give you um, the same output. Now well, the whole point about an, in, you know, an inverse function is, you, you start off with um, your input box, you do something to it, and you get your output box. And if you put 4 into a function and 7 pops out, what you want to be able to do is when you put 7 back, and into your inverse function, it goes back to 4. But here we've got multiple numbers that give us the same output. So how do you know which one to go back to? So you effectively have to restrict the domain. And when you restrict the domain, you've got to say, well, what's the most obvious domain to restrict it to? And the answer is, we do this. We, we knock off everything apart from. This is the first bit that doesn't repeat itself, if you like. And we do it between, as it says here, between minus pi and um, half pi. Minus half pi and half pi. So now we know that this is the graph that we're going to find the inverse of. Now what do we do? Well, if you remember inverse graphs, you have to reflect it in the line y equals x. So if I reflect it, that is the graph. And that is why this blue line is, becomes the inverse. Now... This actually carries on, um, and it, well, this one stopped dead, so this one stopped dead as well. And it's tempting to think that carries on forever. It's not. This one stopped dead, we, so that one stops dead. So drawing some other ones, you can do a similar trick with um, the cosine graph. You may recall the cosine graph actually looks like this. And it, it, I don't think I've drawn it very well, but you get the idea. In fact, it's terrible that it's, it's there that it goes to. But um, given that um, that is or not one to one, you see, what we do, um, we let's raise all that. We restrict it to this, and when we therefore decide to draw a line, the ref line of reflection in the line y equals x, it becomes that, and that is the graph that we are meant to know is the inverse cos of. Uh, y, or inverse cos of x. So it's having, this, having to restrict the graph to a certain domain is a bit weird, but it's what we have to do. Um, the tan graph is also restricted. You may recall it's go, there's lots of asymptotes and stuff on it, but that's the restricted version. Um, I draw the line y equals x. I therefore can reflect it. Um, this is not bounded, though. Your One thing you may recall is this red line carried on and on and on up. And down and down and down and down and um, just goes on forever. So these these blue lines theoretically carry on forever as well. They get they carry on going. Um, they won't go beyond 1.57. I'll let you work out why 1.57 is a magic number. Anyway, so um, some questions. So it says sometimes inverse trig graphs are called different names, and this is definitely true. We sometimes call inverse sine arc sine, or arc cos, or arc tan. So just a few questions. Find the arc sine of 0.6. That really means the inverse sine of 0.6. I think I can type it into my calculator. So the um, now um, I want this in radians. So make sure you're in radians. So inverse sine of 0.6. I get 0.64. It says 3 6 fig, So I'll go one more. 0.644. Find the arc cos of cos. Well, that means I'll do inverse cos of the cos. 0.25 and those of you with your heads on may not be surprised to learn the answer is a quarter which of course is 0.25 solve the equation arc sine x well the, all this is is it's saying sine x equals 0.54 so i move the sine over and i get oh no it's not it's inverse sine oh, i see the inverse sine of x is so when i move that over the x becomes the sine of 0.54 Oh, I knew you got that wrong then by not reading the question. So in this one I'm going to write the sine of 0.54 because it was already inverse. I reckon x equals 0.514.
It's very similar, so interestingly. It says, next one says, solve the equation tan x equals 2.1. Well, let's do that one here. Tan x equals 2.1. Now, it's in radians. It wants answers between 0 and 2 pi. Bear that in mind. Our first job is x equals the inverse tan of 2.1. Inverse tan of 2.1. And I get 1.13. And you may recall you add on 180 degrees, but now we're adding on pi because we're in radians. So if I add on pi to that, I get 4.27. And the last one says cos of t equals 0.48. So obviously t equals the inverse cos of 0.48. t equals 1.07. And again, you may recall for causes, what you do is 360 minus theta to get your second answer. But this time it's 2 pi because it's in radians. So I'll do 2 times the pi minus the answer. And I get 5.21. Now, interestingly, this says don't stop at 2 pi, go up to 4 pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi onto both of these. So this one gets me... 11.5 and this one 1 1.07 plus 2 pi and I get 7.35 so there are my four answers I reckon if I go beyond that 4 pi is about 12-ish so that sounds about right 11, I think I've done all those right I hope I have if you spot any errors tell me and um, so I, I managed to get through it all I was quite surprised I threw in that starter at the end at, a, at the beginning and still manage to get through everything. So I want you to do exercise 7b. It's um, pages, uh, if you're using the textbook, page 138. But otherwise, I want you to have a look at these and see what you're doing uh, from the exercises. And if there's any um, issues, any questions, um, email me. Come and see me.